followers that continually come here at EIGM Sunday after Sunday to worship with us in the house of the Lord. Amen. So now, just a little announcement, right? So we have CEC in person, Bishop, on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. And if you're unable to make it, you can also join us online. Remember, double double gifting for the region of Western Canada, Church of God of Prophecy, where you give $10 per month towards the Ministry of Western Canada. Pantry is up and running and it's being replenished time and time. We want to tell you a big thank you for always contributing monetarily or by kind. And a reminder, if it's that you're going through a hard time and you, you, know, you don't really wish to speak to anyone about it, we have the pantry in an event like that where you're welcome to just go there, take up whatever you want. You don't have to ask permission or ask anyone. You just go upstairs, open the door, go in the room, turn on the light, take what you want, and leave. And it is welcome for each person who enters through those doors to have access to it. Battle of the month, um, you know, we're in our second quarter in a battling with the months. Um, I hope your month has given their contribution. I was back on to last week that a few of the numbers aren't right. So we're working on trying to rectify the situation so that we can have the correct amount for each month. So we know who is really leading, right? Remember, Ladies Retreat for Western Canada, August 16 to 18 at the Gift Lake Center. Um, price is $280 regular and $310 that it would be after July 31st for the late price. Thank you very much. And if you're going to give your offering today, you can do so online if it's that you don't have the cash at give at eigministries.com. Do have a great day. Hallelujah. We're going to be collecting our offering. Um, and then uh, I was told that we didn't um, do the, the battle of the month final collection last week. So if you're here, we're going to be doing the battle of the month collection for March. We haven't collected for the month of March as yet, so we'll do that today. And then May 4th, not too far from here, probably about another two weeks, will be our church fish fry. Um, so please remember to speak with Sister Riley or to speak with uh, Sister Jackie. If you need fish, um, they will have that provided. And it's going to be May 4th. It's normally here at church, and we start at 5 o'clock. All right? Can we stand? If you have your offering again, take it out. Uh, we're going to be collecting our offering. Um, if you're doing it online, as Sister Janelle said, it's give at eigministries.com. God bless you. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us.
Somebody ought to wave your hands and bless the Lord. Ah. Somebody ought to wave your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Ah. So many things could have happened to us, but we are here today. And I think that is enough reason to give God thanks. I don't know, but I just get so excited when I think about it. Ah, he came from heaven to earth. And even if it was just me alone, I'm just so glad that he still would have died. And I don't know if you think about it and start to just marvel at the goodness of Jesus. But the death that you could not pay, he paid it just for us. He was without sin. He knew no sin. But he came to earth and he died for somebody like me. I just want to tell him, thank you. Jesus come on thank you Jesus father God we give you thanks and praise we thank you for the offering that was collected we pray in the name of Jesus that you will use it. Uh, it will be used to go further in your work. We pray your blessing upon the hands that gave. We pray that you will continue to provide. We pray that you'll continue to make a way. And as we are living, Lord God, even difficult times, we pray that you will continue, God, to pour out upon your people that they will continue to be able to to give. Lord God, we honor you. We exalt you. We lift you up. We crown you King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. We worship you. We praise you, O God. We honor and glorify your name. We declare that you are awesome and mighty. We declare that you are God all by yourself. There is no other God like you. You are awesome you are mighty and I invite you to come into this house in the name of Jesus I invite your presence in this house in the name of Jesus I declare all other voices be still in the name of Jesus God be glorified God be exalted Lord we honor you in Jesus name glory to your name Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. In the name of Jesus. Have your way today. Jesus, we glorify you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, the somewhere that says I've heard other voices speaking to me to deceive and to lead me astray but my shepherd's voice is different from all others I'm a sheep and I know my shepherd's voice mighty God I invite you into this house I invite you into this house Every high thing, every high thought, every high mind, we tear you down in the name of Jesus. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. 
Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh in this house. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Mm. We declare it in this house today. That worship will be easy. In the name of Jesus. We declare that worship will be free. In the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, we say just have your way. Hallelujah. We now invite the praise and worship team to come. Spirit of the living God, we exalt you. We honor you. We bless your name, Jesus. Wave your hands and give him praise and glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just continue to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. There's just a difference in the atmosphere right now. We have invited the presence of the Lord and there's just a difference in the atmosphere right now. Hallelujah, God. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift Jesus higher. A little higher.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. Hallelujah. You are brighter than the morning star. Last week we had the eclipse. And of course people spend millions, thousands of dollars. I remember Ontario spent thousands just to prepare for five minutes eclipse. And if that happens and people wondering and they marvel at the beauty of that, just imagine when Jesus returned for his own. Hallelujah. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that grows, by the way. And we know that lily is very pretty at the roadside. Different color when it blooms. But Jesus is fairer than that. Hallelujah. So we have all reason to worship him. He's worthy. Hallelujah. What a precious God. Hallelujah. You give light, you are light, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken.
shout, come on and shout his praise. Oh, all the earth will shout your hallelujah. Your heart will cry, these bones will morning is wonderful hallelujah you are great just tell him he's great thank the Lord for his greatness this morning it's your breath it's the breath of the almighty God in our lungs so many persons today don't have a chance they want to open their mouth and they cannot speak but we are alive and well we have the opportunity to give God some praise today because he is worthy let's forget about yourself just concentrate on him and worship him hallelujah great are you lord all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord praise him for his mighty acts praise him according to his excellent greatness praise him in dance praise him in singing praise him in shouting when you're on the road you praise him when you're in your bed you praise him when you're in your bathroom you praise him on the bus you praise him praise him at work hallelujah hallelujah he is worthy hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah great are you lord for all that you have done for us you are great you do miracles so great there's no one else like you Jesus. There's none to compare to this almighty God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Do you love the Lord this morning? Jesus. Jesus. Do you love the Lord this morning? Jesus. Let me hear you shout, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. 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 
for your mercies never fail me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing all the goodness of God let us do that one more time I love you Lord for your mercies for your mercies never fail all my days and all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment from the moment that I wait until until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God song is a very popular song but when we stop to think of the words of this song all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so good there are many unanswered prayers there are many things that we are still praying for we haven't seen the result but all my life you have been faithful 
scripture said, in times of famine, my children shall be fed. So no matter what we are going through, just hold on to the words of God. In times of famine, my children shall be fed. All my life you have been faithful. So many times we waver. And when I sing this song, when I think about this, I said, God, so many times we become so ungrateful because we want this and we don't get that. But we don't thank you for life. We don't thank you for breath. We don't thank you that we can see. We can talk. We can walk. Hallelujah. All my life, you have been faithful. Thank you, Jesus. So I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, all my life, you have been so with every breath, with every breath that I am able, for I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing. Hallelujah, 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 as we invite the man of God now to bring the word, hallelujah. the name of Jesus. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, hallelujah, I will sing of the goodness of God. Blessed Jesus. We cannot sing of the goodness of God unless you know what you're singing about. Amen? I will sing because all my life I know, God, that you have been faithful. Therefore, I will sing of the goodness of God. How wonderful to worship the faithful the true, the one and only living God. We give him praise in his house this afternoon. We lift up his name because he's the only one that deserves every single praise throughout all the earth and heaven. And so this morning, I am joyful in him. I lift up his name because he has been faithful to me. My God has never failed me. There are many times I have failed him. But in truth, he has never failed me. There's a song that says, he never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never fail me and anywhere I go I want the world to know that Jesus Christ never fail me yet. Brothers, brothers and sisters, he is indeed faithful and so I greet you in the faithful and mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. It is a good day to magnify the Lord in his house. You know, we look at the nice weather. It wasn't so long we were crying that it was cold. But I, I, I normally say if you look up, you will see how beautiful it is. Ignore the white and beer and you will think it's summer. You know, today it looks like summer to me. I don't know about you, but I see bright sunshine outside. 
And I'm excited because I'm alive to see it. I am alive with eyes to see it. Brothers and sisters, don't take things for granted. You never know what's around the next bend. But God indeed is faithful. Before I, uh, I, I get into my, the words that laid on my heart, uh, there's something I, I, I need to suggest to you. It has come to me that we should have a, a care group night in the form that we would have worship, full for worship, just like we do on a Sunday. And after that, we will break out in our several different groups and we can have our care groups meeting. That means ladies can break out to a room, youth can break out to a room, young adults, whichever way the group falls. But let me tell you something. If we as a church don't get out of the Sundays only, we sing about all our lives. He has been faithful. Yes, we get, yet we give him. We give him from 10.30 to minutes to one, and that's it. Brothers and sisters, it's time to wake up. So I want you to think about it. I haven't picked which night we will do it, but we are going to do it. If it is four, if it is my wife and I, we're going to start. Because if you don't, you're going to realize that the boat is leaving you behind. Amen? Amen? I want to know that you, you hear me because normally I put out stuff and I can't tell people I've heard. It's time to wake up. It's not about me. It's about him. Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, this, this quarter we were talking about let us be fruitful. Let us be fruitful according to John chapter 15, 1 and 2. And for the month of April, we want our minds to be focused on fruitfully multiply and replenish. Fruitfully multiply and replenish. And we talk about that in Genesis chapter 1, 28 and A. But today I want to speak to you along those lines on fruit of light for all my days. Fruit of light for all my days. My scripture to you is from uh, Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 5 to 8. And uh, I'm reading the NIV. For of this you can be sure. Let's stand for the reading, please. Ephesians 5 from verse 5. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Let us pray. Father, I give you praise. I lift up your name, God. Your word stands and speaks loud and clear. This afternoon, God, as we Dig in your word and look in your scripture. Oh God, let us hear from you, Father in heaven, the word you have for us this day. Lord Jesus, let not this man, oh God, get in the way at this time, Lord. But let your Holy Spirit guide and direct what we should hear. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. As I prepared for this, I started thinking of what I learned in school about photosynthesis. 
and you might call it something else. You know, but like, like somebody I know would say, you pronounce it your way, and I'll pronounce it my way. Photosynthesis, the process by which green plants and some other organisms use sunlight to make food. Amen? So those of you who have forgotten that, you know, you're welcome that I refresh your memory on it. It's, it's, it was, when we learned of it in school, it was an amazing thing to me. That with whatever that green stuff was in those green leaves, when it gets into sunlight, it starts to create fruit or food, as we call it. The ability of the plant. There are some plants that will only do things in the dark. You know, there are some plants, if you don't set up at night, you can see what is happening. But let me tell you something. When it comes down to the plant of sunlight, the majority of them, they do produce because of the sunlight. Isn't it a wonder then that the scripture encourages us to walk as children of light? Remember, when we, when we talk back about Genesis, where the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. It was not that they were going to stand and exist separate from God. When God pronounced that on them, they were still in the, in, in the wonderful favor of Almighty God. Disobedience had, was yet to come in. Yet God looked at two a man and a woman, and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Without God Almighty, humanity cannot fulfill that kind of uh, pronouncement upon them. As a matter of fact, Jesus, when he walked this earth, referred to one without God and Christ as being in darkness. Because he is light, the scripture teaches us. And in him, there is no darkness at all. And according to John, John would say, walk in the light as he is in the light. So you see, children of God, we are called from darkness into light. And we are called to be fruitful. We are, we are called to bear fruit based on uh, our interaction with the light. And you know, the light is indeed God. When we look at the scripture, in Ephesians 5, Paul began in verse 5 like this, for of this you can be sure. You see, Paul was trying to eliminate any doubt in what he was saying. He said, you can be sure of what I'm going to tell you. We have many, many times we are going around and sometimes we hear all kinds of other doctrine and we start to question which is right and which is wrong. But Paul said, what I'm going to tell you, Ephesians, you can be sure of this. In Jamaican term, we say you can take it to the bank. You can bank on it. In, in, in other words, when God hears this, God approves. Of this, you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. No immoral. No impure. Or greedy person. All the fruit of darkness has been summed up in these three things. Immoral, impure, and greedy. <laughs> Why do you think they, they always want to charge you more for what you go buy? More interest? Mm -hmm. It's like greed always wants to suck in more. It's never enough. You see, being hungry and greedy are two different things. 
You see, the greedy person will still eat he's not, though he's not hungry. Amen? But when the Bible said when we hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. In other words, being hungry for the things of God, we shall be filled. But greedy takes it at another level. Greediness will lead to gluttony since we are talking about food. And gluttony, the Bible said, is sin. How can we sin with food? <laughs> As you get older like me, if you overheat before you go to bed, you, 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 you find yourself saying, you know, I really shouldn't have ate so much. Or I really should have had that last thing. I should have passed it by. You, you know my, my motto these days? I look at it and I, I'm thinking, what I've eaten, there's no way I've gotten rid of it yet. So when my stomach says, you're hungry, go have a snack, I said, you're lying to me. I know you're still full. But if we are not careful, we are sucked in, we are drawn in to doing the things that we know is going to not be so good for us. But the Bible declares, contrary to what others are saying these days, I love the Lord. Jesus is, oh, he's my best friend. We hear all of those nice things, but we don't hear about servitude. We don't hear about reverence. We don't hear about humility. We don't hear about sacrifice. Because it's good to be on the, on, on the feel-good side of things. You know, when I was younger in the faith, you know, I did not like Sunday service, they call it divine worship. Because the songs were too slow. Prayer meetings, big no-no. Because that's where they sing, Jesus keep. As a young person, I'm thinking, mm -mm. but you see on a Sunday night when they say, gospel meeting, I have my tambourine out. And I'm rejoicing and dancing with the Lord. As I grow and mature in him, I start to appreciate some of those slower, reflective songs. Because it's not just a feel-good time. It's a soul-searching time. You know what I'm talking about? You know the types that when you sing it, you start to feel things in you that you never knew existed. You, start, you find yourself going down on your knees and going, Oh, God, I need thee every hour. Come quickly and abide. Our life is vain. And when you sing, I need thee, you feel like you're pouring out your heart. And guess what happened? The Lord pours into us. Bless the name of Jesus. So you see, when it comes down to the, those three things, immoral, it seems like you always come up with the wrong and the most evil things to do. Immoral, nothing. You have no boundaries. If it's, if it's good for me, it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. I'm going to do it. Immoral. You're not considering how it might affect others. You don't mind that. You don't consider whether it is against God or not. And some of us children of God, we have found ourselves in those times where we are doing things where we are not stopping uh, ourselves to say, is God approving of this or not? Today in Sunday school, we talk about being Jesus' disciples. And we, 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 were, we were saying that we should have a measuring, a kind of measuring stick. Would Jesus do this? Can you see as his disciples, it was the duty of the disciples to copy every single thing that the rabbi did. Otherwise, you're really not his. And so immoral, impure, oh, oh God, Jesus, help us. You know, some Christians really have dirty minds. Come with me, children of God. You see, if we don't, if we don't shine the light on these things, they're going to stay there and we find out it causes us to miss out on salvation way, to miss out on the hand when Jesus calls for us. Some of us truly have dirty minds. And don't say I'm calling your name. When I say dirty minds, if you allow your imagination to drift, do you know that uh, at times you can say, well, I didn't really commit the act. You know, it, it just kind of 
it cries across my, my main my memory or my thought or my imagination. So that's okay. I didn't commit the sin. Well, you know what Jesus said. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You know, when you are sanctified, children of God, when you are sanctified, because the mind and the imagination is a part of you. Amen? When you are sanctified, that automatically gets sanctified too. Hmm? If you have wandering eyes, husbands, wives, if you have wandering eyes, you know why they keep wandering? They need to be sanctified. You know, you, your mind wandering and you start, your imagination start to bring about all kind of different things. You have moved over into a immoral behavior and impure heart. It stays here alert and guess how the enemy brings temptation. It's of those very things that have been breeding in the dark. <laughs> Do you know that if you practice to walk a lot in the dark, your eyes get used to the dark, right? You see things in the dark that other people would normally see. Guess who wanders in the dark? The enemy of our soul. He's the prince of darkness. So anything that is dear, that he already can pick it out. And then when it's time, he brings it. Because remember, what did the Bible say? The only temptation that comes our way is what we are already been thinking about. The devil cannot bring a temptation to you if something is not hearing you for him to attach it to. So when you are sanctified throughout your body, eyes, soul, body, mind. So when the enemy enters in, you can say, get thee behind me, Satan. Because you know you should walk as a child of light. Because Paul said you can be sure of this. None of who fall within those three categories can inherit the kingdom of God and Christ. Such a person is an idolater. Worship idols. A person who worship an idol or idols. And I start to think, let's take it a little further. I start to look up words that are similar in meanings to that. And this is what the Oxford Dictionary gave me. Dissident. Dissenter. Nonconformist. You know those people that can't, they can't fit into anything? No matter if something is going good, you take them and plug them in there, it's going to break apart. Hmm? You ever had friends like that in school? You know, you have a, you know you're, you're rapping and things are going and you get one come in and everything just breaks up. Dissenters, non-conformists, apostate, free thinker, renegade, disruptor, skeptic, agnostic, atheist. That got me. All the way to there, you would say an unbeliever, pagan, heathen, similar to what is referred to as an idol worshiper. God help us, Jesus. Don't be deceived by empty words. You know, it's nice to hear words that you love. Feel good words. You know, uh, I, I, I learned something when I came to this country. Uh, most children grew up not loving competition. And so, you know, they, they create these categories. You know, at least you tried. So they were giving, they give awards for the winner and they give the awards to the also runs kind of thing. Because they don't want you, they don't want, they don't want the child to leave thinking that they lost. But yet still, in real life, we have winning and we have losing. And I could, I can understand what they were trying to do, but it creates an entitlement as they grow up in life. And so the first time somebody said to them, you lost. (laughs) 
And if, you, if you're going to also get a prize, why would you try harder? You see that what we have in the Christian world today. There are those who are making sacrifices. Say, oh, the blood of Jesus cover me. I mean, I, I'm giving up everything for you, Jesus. And then there are others going, I am having a good time. Because Jesus already paid it all and nailed it to the cross. And then we all say, we are all Christians. But there's one thing that we can be sure of. Is that the separator at the end is Jesus Christ the Lord. It's God Almighty and not us. And he said he knows who belong to him. He knows who are children of light and who are children of darkness. So we don't have to worry. He even said in his word, let the wheat and tears, oh hallelujah, let the wheat and tears grow until the day of harvest. And then he talks about what is going to happen to the wheat and what is going to happen to the tears. Don't be deceived by empty words. You know, you don't have to worry about that. You know, Jesus already covered it. Yeah? Because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. If everything goes, then what's the use of having a label of obedience and disobedience? You know, just do what you feel is right. What makes you happy, just do it. If you're going to be disobedient, that means there are rules. There are things that should be obeyed. There are commands. There are uh, uh, statutes laid out by the one whom we follow. For you were once darkness, children of God. We are not the same as we were before, amen? We are not the same children of God. No? I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Let's celebrate for a while. All things are past. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. For you were once darkness. Hallelujah. But now you are light in the Lord. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Do not be partners with them. Don't be like them. Live as children of light. Find out what pleases the Lord. Amen. Oh, God help us, Jesus. That means we have to please the Lord, doesn't it? You know how good it feels if you, when you're justified that your ways are pleasing the Lord? Amen? I mean, I mean, when trouble comes, when the hurricane is raging, you are confident. You're saying, I know the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord will make a way for me. 
If I live the holy life, trust in God and do the right, I know the Lord will make a way for me. Find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Because you're a child of light, no darkness can come around you, children of God, because the light will expose it. Amen? We were saying in Sunday school that if you have your light in your house and you come in and you flick the switch and no, nothing happens, you're thinking it's either the switch or the bulbs. So you got to go change something or light gone. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. But children of light will expose wrong. Sometimes it's not, it's not what you say, but the life you live. Can you imagine if you're in your, your workplace and two claim to be children of God and one living whichever way and you're walking in the right, in the light, in the truth. Pretty soon, people start look at both of you and, and saying, why, how come this one is this way, but you are this way? Your life will expose the darkness in the other. Does that make sense? Amen. In 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have these treasures in jars of clay to show that this is all surpassing power is from God and not of us. You see, without that light, we will not produce fruit of light. Oh God help us, Jesus. The fruit of the light consists in all goodness. Hallelujah. In all goodness, in all righteousness and truth. So if you think about it, it would be like the, the light is like that green kind of the chlorophyll in us. Mixed with the, oh God help us Jesus, the goodness, the righteousness and the truth. And it starts bear these fruits. It's not coming from the darkness. You know, I believe the people in the dark also bear fruit. But Jesus said what? A good tree? A good tree will be a good fruit. Amen? <laughs> Jesus help us. So you see, when, 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 when Paul said the fruit of the light consists of all goodness. A good tree, a tree with goodness in it will bear good fruit. Fruit of light, righteousness and truth. Goodness, according to the Bible dictionary. In man is not a mere passive quality. You know some people say, I'm a good man. And I say, how are you doing? They say, I'm a good man. They're, they're, they're really saying, I'm okay, I'm all right. Because the word of God said there is none good. But when the, the one who is good get into you who is not good and drive out all the non-goodness, we become good. We are able to produce fruit of light of goodness. But it's not a passive quality but deliberate. Goodness is something that we actually do. They prefer light, right to wrong. The firm and persistent resistance of all moral evil. The choosing and following of all moral good. This is goodness, brothers and sisters. Righteousness is the, the quality, state, and the characteristic of being in the right. Oh, man. Truth, the factuality, faithfulness, firmness. Reality and reliability. Some of us, we have no reliability. 
If you put it in Jamaica, they say, it's a union repentance. May God help us. Darkness cannot bear the fruit of light. It can only produce the fruit of darkness. So in my conclusion here, the fruit produced as a result of the presence of sunlight differs greatly from the fruit of darkness. We are children of God who are called to produce fruit of light. Oh, in our fruitfulness, it must be fruit of light, meaning consisting of goodness, righteousness, and truth. And if we can do that for all our days, we must make it in. Hmm? We won't just make it in, but we will make it in. We will thrive in the goodness of God. There seems to be a similar line that we can compare with photosynthesis and uh, spiritually how we look at the fruit of light. You know, breadfruit bear in the light. You know those? <laughs> oh, Lord. All the good ones that we want, bear in the light. Amen. Have nothing. Further on in, in uh, Ephesians 5, down at verse 11, it says, Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. In verse 12, it says, It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But the trouble is, some of us who are claiming to be children of light are doing some kind of funky business in the darkness. And then we want to be labeled as children of light. We believe that when we rub shoulders with a child of light, we automatically become a child of light. Oh, God help us, Jesus. It's just like oh, my black skin can rub off and, you know, a light, and, and Brother Richard. No matter how hard we rub it. You see, you see, I, I have to, I have to pick on Brother Richard because he's brown man. <laughs> but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. So just because you rub shoulder, you're not necessarily illuminated until you accept who his light with inside, on the inside. This is why it is said, "Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead." And Christ will shine on you. Wake up sleeper. Arise from the dead. A dead suggest in your trespasses and your sins. And Christ will shine on you. So brothers and sisters, we want to be fruitful as God has intended us to be. But we want to bear the right fruit, fruit of light. For all our days. And I close on this. The fruit that we are talking about. Are fruits that can be seen. By others. Because you know. It will start with you. The tree does not bear. The fruit for itself. You know. It's not for. Its benefit. But it's for the benefit of. Others, think about it. It provides food and whatever else for others. And you see, the, the tree, you can't say the tree has on fruit if it only has on leaves. Spiritually, we could have a lot of leaves. Walk with me, I'm talking spiritually now. We could have a lot of leaves. And we feel like, man, I am like the tree planted by the rivers of water. But the, the, the psalm one still said, which bringeth forth its fruit in its seasons. Amen. And remember, when Jesus came to the fig tree, it had on leaves. But Jesus was looking for fruit. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise, Lord. We lift up your name. We bless your name and we thank you for your words. God, let your word abide in us. Let his 
oh Father, let it take root in us, Lord, and effect in us, oh God, the right attitude, the right spirit, oh God. Let it bring out the right behavior, God, and the right reaction, Lord Jesus, that we may have our wrongs rectified and whatever crooked part that they would be made straight. Lord, have your way today, God. If there are any, God, that really don't know you, who, who are yet to open their hearts to you, Lord, we pray, Father, that they will see this opportunity, God, and surrender to you. Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for your message this day and your presence here. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Stand, please stand.
Samaritan said all to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. You just heard the words to be fruitful for the Lord. And if we really examine ourselves, we all know that somewhere, somehow along this Christian path, we have come short. In something, probably in our words, in our action, even to say to our neighbor, the Lord love you. We are all guilty in some way, but today we have another opportunity to surrender everything to Jesus. You don't have to tell your friend what is it that you're surrendering about. Jesus is the one that forgives from all our sins. So we have the opportunity and what I love that we have that access to the throne of grace. So we can go to Jesus ourselves. We don't have to go to a high priest. We have a relationship with God. So we can speak to him for our own self and say, God, I surrender everything, whatever is in me that should not be. Remove it and help me to be a fruit-bearing Christian for you. So today, if you have an issue and you want to come and pour it off the altar here, Jesus is still here. Wherever you are, if you want to stay in your seat, just pray as we sing the chorus one more time. I surrender all. Just tell it to Jesus. He is the friend that well known. You have no other brother friend, anyone else that knows about our situation but the true and living God. Hallelujah. Surrender Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your words. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your fellowship. For answering our prayers. We thank you for being the God that you are. Great, wonderful, powerful. Lord, we thank you for loving us. With loving kindness, you has drawn us unto you. And so today, God, we're asking you for your blessing upon our life. Bless us in the morning. Bless us in the evening. Wherever we go, we would be blessed. Whatever we put our hands to, we would be blessed. We command this week into your hands. That this week is a blessed week. This week, we will get good news. Whatever we have been praying and waiting for, we would hear good news. This week would not receive any news that will bring tears to our eyes. But we command this week into your hand that this is an anointed week as children of God that we are blessed. And we pronounce a blessing upon our lives that you God will bless us. We are told that we should be blessed in the country, blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Wherever we go God we just need the blessing of the Lord to be upon us. Surely, as David said, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So God bless each and every one of us here right now. God, you know our needs. You know what we have been laboring for. You know what we have been asking for. And so God, we work upon the good desire of our hearts. You said nothing good you will you withhold from them that love you. And truly today, God, we love you. And we're asking you, God, let your goodness continue. follow us. Wherever we go, that when others see the light in our lives, they will want to worship you because you have done great things for us. We are up, we are glad. So we thank you, Lord, for your mercies. We just want to give you thanks for the unanswered prayers. We want to give you thanks for what you have done. We want to thank you for our life on a whole that we have life, we have strength breath. You provide for us. You take care of us. And for God, wherever we have been grateful, we ask you to forgive us. And we receive it graciously. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
announce the benediction. I know after the welcome, we had two people walking in. I know that I know one name is Kevin. Bless the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you being here. And uh, with Samantha. So thank you so much for coming. Somebody close to them, just give them a shake, a shake a hand, and tell them to come back next time. Next week is men's ministry, so Kevin, yeah, next week. Right? Bless your hearts. Go ahead. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go with God, and God will go with us. Amen.